All right, today we're going to show you guys how to use the Pascal Coin Wallet. This is the latest build, version 1.05. A lot of people have issues trying to figure out what to do within the wallet. I know I did when I first started using it, but I pretty much have it all figured out now. There's been some changes, so I'm using the latest wallet. So people download the latest one, they'll know what they're doing. First off, you start off, when you load into it, it's going to look something similar like that and show the select beginning accounts and stuff. And we'll start off with the mining and everything, show you guys how to load up, get into mining first, you go to the project and options, then you can set up password and stuff for your wallet, change your password and things, and you can, here's where you can set your miner name, uh, internal server port, your default's 4004, but you can set it to what you want. Uh, this is to allow automatic mining when you get connected to the nodes, when you first load up. You can also set how many of your cores from your CPU you want to use, uh, likely. Be a lot more if you were like running a server or something like my cpu has eight cores but i generally just use about six of them which i'm not mining right now i'll show you that a little later and then here's your minor private key options you this is the key that it uses for hashing when it's mining you can have it set to use a new private key for each generated block use a random existing key which are keys that are in your accounts or you can Use it to always mine with one individual single key, which is what I usually do. It's just up to personal preference. I don't think it really makes a difference. Basically, this other stuff's probably more for developer type things, and I'm not really in, uh, informed yet as to what those do. I haven't messed around with them. I would not take a chance of messing anything up. Just turn mining on, but I'm going to turn it back off. But you can see that it's mining with six miners. And it's going about 3,063 kilohash. Whatever. I'm mining with a 8-core AMD. I think it's a 8320, I think is what the processor is that this computer has in it. I have multiple different ones. <clears throat> Some of my computers have 4-core AMDs. One has a six core, this one has an eight core. Uh, Pentium CPUs seem to do fairly well to uh, eight core Pentium. I'm using on a server seems to be doing about 6,000 kilohash a second. But yeah, that's all there is to the mining. You, just, you can either just turn it on here, but if you want to select your options, you can go over here and choose how much, how many CPU cores you want to use and things like that. But it's pretty self-explanatory and then just will have your allow mining clicked and when you're not using the program you want to have it minimized for it to continue mining if you click the X it will close out of the program and you will not be mining anymore so you want to have it minimized minimize it to the system tray and then you can go down here and open it back up right. then um, over here's your accounts like this is just the default to see your accounts only you can go over here if you set up multiple different ones, you can look at them over here. Like if you go to private keys, then you can set up new accounts over here. You can go to generate a new key. And this is how you create a new wallet, I guess, but it doesn't have accounts. You don't get an account until you either find a block or you get somebody to, like each block that you find that generates like five accounts. But if you have like a friend or somebody that already has accounts, they could send one to you. So here I'll go in here and generate a new account and give you an example. Like these are different methods of encryption that they use. It's a curve encryption type method thing, but the defaults, this one here, you can go up here and name it. So test, show you guys kind of what it does. And, uh, Here's the test, like it'll give you your private key. And then you can use your public key. Like if you want to use your public key to have somebody send you an account or coins, um, 
something to send you an account with coin send it or just an empty account you can go to export public key and it'll be like that it'll copy your public key which is this right here to the clipboard so then when you go in to paste it click into something and you just have to push control v or right click and paste and it'll paste in your public key and then you also have your private key you can export your private key things like that I think that's also where you can go to back up your account, like export your private key and back it up. Um, you can set like in the options and stuff, you can go in there, set up a password for your accounts as well, which is recommended. But you want to make sure you remember it. Um, this is new functionality that it has here. And I'll go into that in just a second. Um, pending operations are operations that are transmitted received from your nodes or other nodes that will be included in the next block so say i go transfer this account to someone then it'll enter like if i wanted to transfer this account to somebody else i would click it and i'd go to project or operation let's go to new single operation <clears throat> and if i wanted to send a transaction like this one has money in it this one has uh coins i guess pascal coins this one had coins in it if i wanted to send transaction i would say transaction enter the destination account whatever it is like this one uh this one right here account six three three eight zero dash two seven it's a valid account now if i had coins in there say i had 100 coins i would put in 100 <clears throat> and then you can like i don't have anything in it so it shows some sufficient funds but if you wanted to and you had the coins in there you could transfer them and then you can also put in how much of a fee you want to send out to the network and then that helps keep the network alive and gives people incentive to continue mining and you could put whatever you want if you wanted to say three coins and you transfer out three coins for the miner so when they find the block they'll get the 100 block default to amount for when they find the block plus they would get the fee and then uh, you can also go to your accounts and change your private key account if you wanted to generate a new private key for the account or you can transfer accounts to a new owner like i showed you earlier with the public key if uh which is the test one on here like if i wanted to transfer this account to that one you would get somebody's public key they would send it to you and then you'd go in here transfer whatever account you wanted to transfer and then you would push control v or paste and then you would transfer this account you would hit execute and then it's by default just encrypted with their public key. You could also encrypt it with a password, or you can not encrypt it at all as a public payload. Fairly basic. And you can also put in payload data. I guess that would be for like if you maybe wanted to give it a name or something or send them a message like, hey, thanks or something. So pending our operations, we already went over Block Explorer where you go to see the latest blocks, block history. This is the block number, the date and time, how many operations were included in the block, the block reward. This would be if anybody included a fee, like say I sent 50 coins and I included a three coin fee, they would get 100 coins for the block reward plus three coins for the fee I included. This is their target hash. The minor payload is also like the minor name. And if you, by default, it comes up something like this. It's new node, Pascal coin, uh, minor, and it shows like your version. And if you wanted to change it, though, you go to your, like your options, and then it'll come up in here, and it'll have something like that by default. You can go in here and change it to whatever you want it to be. Like mine's just my nickname that I use. And that's basically it. And you just hit OK. That's basically it. And here's the proof of work hash. And here's the safe box hash. Operations. Or this you can see the latest operations that went onto the network. These are the latest ones. They're all just blockchain rewards. Here's where somebody had <clears throat> changed a key on these accounts. You can see the account numbers they changed the key for. Note status information. You can see the active connections. The nodes that you have 
available or possible nodes servers that they can connect to and you'll see some here if there are nodes that are blacklisted and then you also have messages here which uh, it says not to send them <clears throat> unless you have like a reason to i guess whatever like I, uh, when I first signed up, I used this to send a message. I assume it went to the dev, but I'm not sure. I ask, trying to ask them like how to use some stuff with the wallet. But it does uh, seems to transfer out something like it charges you a fee when it does it, but I'm not exactly sure. So when I first did it, it said something about transferred some coins, but I don't think I had any coins at the time, so not exactly sure if it cost anything to send a message or not. I would assume not. Yeah, everything's all basically pretty simple and self-explanatory. You have multi, this is all new stuff. You have multi-account operations. Uh, you can find accounts with highest balances. Like if you were just looking in here. That's uh, with all these different systems. I'm not exactly sure how all this works yet. I haven't had time all yet by detail but over time these things we gotta find out I'm assuming this is just where you go into accounts to find stuff to figure out like what find accounts with high, found different balances and things you can do multi-account operations and stuff like I'll go and I haven't worked worked with any of this shit but I'll go in here and try an example like I'm gonna take this one Account. It's got 100 Pascal coins. I'm going to put it over here. Take this account with 100 coins. Put it over here. Oh, wait, that one's still pinning. Yeah, I can't do that yet. But... Let's see. Take this one. I'm going to take these two accounts with 900 Pascal coins. I'm going to transfer them all at one time into this account here. Total. Shows the accounts, total balance, transaction ID, how much you want to send, all balance destination account I'm going to send to you. It's this one. So it's going to be 614150. And I'm not going to include a fee right now because I don't want to lose any of the coins. Uh, but like I said, if you want to help support the network and stuff, you can do it. I'm just doing this as a test example to show you guys for the video. And I'm just going to leave it encrypted with the account's public key. And hit execute, and then it'll say execute two operations, how many operations it is, what you're doing, operation, sending a transaction to that account, the amount they will receive is that, how much fee will be transmitted to the network as soon as you click yes. Yes, successfully execute two operations. Send 800 coins from that account, 100 coins from that account. Hit OK. And then these are going to be orange for a while. You can see it remove the coins from this account and that account there. And it's sending them into this one. Now these are going to remain orange for a while. And then as it gets processed through the network, they'll start changing colors. At first, they turn like I think it was a yellow color. And then they turn like a lightish colored green and then as they go longer and they get confirmed like after so many blocks and stuff i'm not sure ex what the exact number of blocks is for transactions they'll eventually become dark green see how they just turn yellow and over time it'll eventually become dark green which means it's completely done whenever you discover a new block it takes 100 blocks for them to confirm like this is a newer one that my uh, computer had found and it'll take 100 blocks before this will be confirmed and the 100 coins will be confirmed into the into my wallet <clears throat> and then like i said every time a new block is found five accounts get generated you get one with the balance and it, like this one was only 100 but if a fee had been included it could have been like 109 or 105 whatever it would have been 100 plus whatever fee you had included and then when the person finds it and then they also get four empty accounts that they can it's like trade or give to somebody else, new people or something. And then people can use those to purchase coins and have somebody send them to their address and things like that. But it's all fairly simple. 
self-explanatory. This here shows you the accounts balance total. Like the total of my accounts on this computer has 1,000 Pascal coins. Um, when I'm not on my accounts, though, the total on the network, there's uh, 69,865 accounts total right now. The total balance of Pascal coins in existence is 1,397,300. Yeah, but that's how you use the multi-operation thing and stuff. And like I said, it's fairly simple and self-explanatory. Like I could click a bunch of these accounts if I wanted to send somebody, say, five accounts. I would choose like five of them. Let's see. You just have to go through. And then these ones, uh, you have to remove them back out, I guess. It doesn't automatically remove them back out after operations are done. <clears throat> it doesn't look like, but I'm sure they'll get that fixed later. Right now, you just... If I want to transfer these five counts to somebody else, I just take all five of them, choose the five counts, and put them over there. And then I would go to operation, transfer, count to new owner, and uh, I would take somebody's public key that they send me, and then I would paste it into here, and then I would hit execute. Okay, and then it would send them those five accounts. Same thing with coins, like if coins, you would go to if you had an account with a balance, you'd go in here, put in the account's number, which is these over here. It would be like this one would be 61411-50. And then you would put in the amount of what you wanted to send, so like 50, 100 coins or whatever, and then how much of a fee you wanted to include for the miner, and then hit execute and OK, things like that. And like I said down here, if you wanted to just, by default, it's just done with the destination account's public key. You can encrypt it, the transaction with the password. Or you can not encrypt it at all as a public key. Okay. That's basically it, guys. That's basically all there is to the wallet and stuff. There's nothing too technical. I mean, it's not exactly the same as some other cryptocurrency wallets and stuff, but it's all fairly simple and self-explanatory. And I hope this will help some of you guys out. And uh, I'll include down below the video, I'll include an account number. Most likely this one, if anybody wants to make a donation to help out. I'll try to make future videos for future wallet versions and stuff that come out. And uh, hope this helps people out and new guys and everything.